What is going on, Bills fans, Bills Mafia? I'm Thomas. This is the Buffalo Fanatics. And thank you guys for checking out another video. Today, it's Monday, the day after the massacre, Chicago Bears came into New Air Field, thought they could take on our Buffalo Bills, and they whooped us, man. 41-9. to Absolute destruction of our offense. Horrible game for the Bills. Horrible game. I mean, wow. Wow, that was bad. But anyways, let's get right into it. So I was actually at the game, and we left at halftime. <laughs> we we said, I, bump that, I'm out. Uh, we left, and... I'm ha kind of happy I did because it didn't get better for the Buffalo Bills after halftime. Uh, I'm going to get into a couple things here about the Bills, but before I do, I just want to go over something so that all Bills Mafia is kind of on the same page. Before we start saying, fire Dayball, you know, fire McDermott, fire whoever, cut this player, cut that player. Before we say anything like that, let's, let's rewind it back a little bit. And, and let's get going here. So, the first thing that I want to say is when Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott got hired, there was a plan. You can kind of see the plan panning out. At the beginning of their tenure, they kind of traded away a couple players, a couple key players. Ronald Darby, Sam, uh, Sammy Watkins, uh, Marcel Darius. It was indicators that the Bills were tanking. Indicators that they were. Not saying that they were. They didn't believe it. They said, that's not what we're doing here. They end up making it to the playoffs. Luckily, on that historic night, it was a great Christmas. Uh, but then, next season comes around, back to reality. We lose three Pro Bowl offensive linemen on the offensive side. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Our defense improves. Our offense totally gets destroyed. We get rid of Tyrod. Uh, not was I wasn't a big fan of him anyways, but, you know probably could use him right now <laughs> uh, with how, how the offense is going and um, then again we don't have a run game so you don't really know if he would even have success in this offense but Josh Allen is quietly sitting on the sidelines looking I hope Derek Anderson is mentoring him like he should have been doing since he got hired and all I want to say before we go into firing anybody or say anything like that there was a plan the plan was, we're going to draft a quarterback. We're going to suck. Stay with me, Terry Pagoulas, Terry and Kim. Stay with me, says Brandon B. and Sean McDermott. Let's, let's not jump the gun here and say, oh, oh, wow, we're horrible. Get rid of, we're going to get rid of them. Before we even do that, they, they knew coming in that they had to do some, they had to rebuild a little bit. They had to, they had to build the draft, like they said, right? And, and you know, now they have like $85 million in cap space because of the dead cap they got they got up, you know, this year so they wouldn't have any, like, well, they are going to have some next year, of course, but you know what, you know what I'm saying, $85 million to spend it in the offseason and beyond, you know, then they got 11 draft picks. All I'm saying is Bill's Mafia, hold your horses, hold your horses, okay? Before we say anything about firing anybody, there's a plan. This offense doesn't have the main guy in Josh Allen. It doesn't. It has Nathan Peterman, Derek Anderson. We got Matt Barkley on this team. So <laughs> we don't have good quarterbacks right now. Now, is that to say that all the blame is on the quarterbacks? Absolutely not. We can see from the play call that it's not very good. Our wide receivers, if we had probably like a guy like Antonio Brown, we probably wouldn't be as bad. We probably need to get rid of Kelvin Benjamin. I wish we would have traded him because now he's looking like a bum. It looks like we're not going to re-sign him, which I hope we don't. But I would have loved to trade him even for like a sixth, even for like a sixth round draft pick. You know, anything helps in this league, you know, and I think it was a very silly thing to think that, you know, if there's a possibility you're not going to re-sign a guy that you traded for, 
then you probably should ship him off again. Then another high quality team, you know, like one of the, you know, whatever, six and two teams or whatever, you know, they uh, they can get him and they they will pay a price because they're like, okay, well, we need, a, we need a wide receiver and this guy's a big guy and we can bring him in. Also, another guy that the Buffalo Bills should have traded, LaShawn McCoy. I love LaShawn McCoy. Last year and last year and the year before that, he was fantastic. This year, last game, 10 carries, 10 yards. Are you kidding me? I don't know what happened to LaShawn McCoy. He must be so, it's, you know, the, the football is so mental that he must just be like, I, I, I'm doing too much. I got to make my game simple. And it's making him not play the way that he needs to play. And it's not working. Nothing is working for him, and I feel bad for him because, you know, you'd love to see Shady go out go out there and ball out, but it's just not happening. So it would have been nice to see him get traded and moved for, you know, who knows, maybe like a third-round pick and maybe like an uh, offensive lineman or something. You know what I mean? Or like a wide receiver. You trade him for a wide receiver and like a fourth-round pick or something. He's an older player, and he's still got one year on the contract. So there was teams that were looking to get him. I just don't get it. Chris Ivory's out playing him. It doesn't make sense to me. It's all weird. It's all whack. That being said, let's move over to the defensive side. Philip Gaines has got to go. Philip Gaines, I swear to God, every time the ball is thrown his way, he just, ah, and he doesn't turn around. It's so crazy to think that McDermott likes this guy over a young guy like Ryan Lewis, who I thought played pretty good. I think it was against the Titans he played. Um, and he, I thought he played pretty good. And I was kind of expecting him to maybe have more time in the second, you know, second position at cornerback, but maybe not. I think it's time to make a switch though there. Uh, I think it's silly to keep seeing the film and keep seeing him get picked on, not turning his head around, you know, to look for the ball and the freaking penalties, man. That dude that dude stinks. That dude is... I'm sorry, but he is not good. He's got to go. Bump that. He's got to go. Um, another thing. Terrell Pryor. Where were you? You said Peterman. You you said you were going to make him look good. And if I'm not mistaken, he had the first uh, bobbled, you know, catch that was the, turned into a pick six. You clearly shouldn't have said that <laughs> before the game because you got... You did not look good, buddy. Where were you? Um, I didn't see the second half of the game, so if I'm missing something, sorry. I apologize, but, you know, I'm pretty sure I, you know, it's safe to say that they, stu they stunk the rest of the game, so. But, uh, Peterman. Oof. Oof. Those picks were not his fault. Jason Kroom. Getting that, you know, he had the ball and he got ripped out. Charles Clay, hamstring injury. I could go on and on here, guys. I don't even know what even happened last game. There was a moment where you just kind of stopped watching and you're like, what am I even, am I watching football? Like, I don't even know what I'm watching here because like their offense couldn't even do anything. I mean, our best, our best weapon <laughs> is, is like Colton Schmidt right now. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. The Bills offense totally self-destructed last game. I think we need uh, Allen to come back as soon as possible. Just keep praying. <laughs> keep, keep, God, please, we need Allen back. That's what I'm going to be doing because <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't working right now with Peterman. And let the tank begin. Let the tank. Two and seven. Right now, I think the Bills have about the fourth overall draft pick if the season ended today. You got to keep climbing on that board. Uh, if, if you, I mean, you're out of the playoffs right now. You are not even in the hunt, baby. You're done. Your season's over. Don't even, I, I would be so upset if at the end of the season, Josh Allen came back and won like two games and then we get like the seventh or eighth draft pick and I'm like, really? It's like, that's such, that would be such a billsy thing to do would be to not make the playoffs, look really bad during the season, and then at the very end of the season, win a couple games and lose that draft that draft stock, you know, the, the value of that, uh, of their pick. And um, so let the tank begin. Um, I kind of already knew from Monday night and this game, before the game even started, I said, it's going to be 2-7. and seven. Next week, I'm calling it 2-8. and eight. 
I know the Jets don't look that good, and Darnold just threw four interceptions, so maybe our defense can uh, do what the Bears did to us this weekend. But nonetheless, I do hope we lose. I know that's probably going to make some of you guys feel bad and be like, oh, you wanted your team to lose. I want them to win, baby. But I want I want that high draft pick, and I think a lot of people are starting to say, okay, yeah, send it in the tank. It's, it's over. But with that being said... That's going to do it for me, everybody. I hope you guys have a great day wherever you're watching this from, and go Bills. Also, lastly, I want to give a shout-out to uh, a Bills fan I met at the game, Jordan. It was nice meeting you, bud. Uh, I really appreciated talking to you and meeting you. Um, but, but yeah, that was, uh, that was cool. But uh, that's going to do it for me. Uh, stay humble, everybody, about the Bills. <laughs> Try to stay optimistic. Uh, I love all you guys, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.